South Carolina survives, Indiana, Notre Dame, and Stanford get got, and Texas takes care of business. Here is your recap for day five of the NCAA tournament and day one of the Sweet 16. What is up, awesome people of the internet? If y'all haven't hit that like button, please hit it, and we are about to get into the amazing games of Friday. All right, and we begin with Nosegate, a.k.a. Oregon State versus Notre Dame, where Oregon State eked out a win, winning 70 to 65. Now this game can be summed up by a couple of things. One, quality over quantity, ball movement, rebounding, and the importance of momentum. Now Oregon State, they won this game because of the quality of the shots that they took. Guys, in this game, Oregon State only had 48 field goal attempts to 76 that Notre Dame had. But it wasn't about the amount of shots, it was about the quality of the shots that they took. And for Oregon State, they shot 60% from the field. And they did that by getting the ball to the right person at the right time. And that was getting the ball down to Tamia Gardner, who had an amazing game, finishing with a double-double, 21 points and 11 rebounds. Then of course you had star Reagan Beers, who showed up and showed out with 18 points of her own, and also 13 rebounds for the squad. Now, what really, really sealed the deal for Oregon was hitting timely buckets in the fourth quarter. With two minutes left to go, Oregon State was up by just one, 60 to 59. Notre Dame had the ball. What they do? They had one of their rare turnovers of the game. Reagan Beers gets down the court, tries to get a layup, misses it. And who's there? Lily Hansford was there for the O-board. She passed the ball around. She gets the ball back, gets a three-pointer. Splash. Bucket. Oregon State is now up by four points, 63-59. to And they never let up from there. To me, that particular play, paired with the Talia Von Olhoffen block of Sonia Citron uh, with 20 seconds left to go, that those two plays were what won the game for Oregon State. Uh, making the right offensive and defensive read at the right time, and also grabbing O-boards and just grabbing rebounds in general. Now, Oregon State win this game after turning the ball over a uncharacteristically high 26 times in this game to Notre Dame's five. And it's pretty rare that you can win a game with having that high of a turnover difference, um, but they did it. And the reason why they did it is because they out-rebounded Notre Dame. They out-rebounded Notre Dame 42-24. to and also, they out-assisted Notre Dame with 20 assists to the Irish's 11. That's how they got the dub. Rebounds, ball movement, passing. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the momentum-changing momentum nature of Nosegate. Hannah Hidalgo's nose ring is being taken out. At the start of the second quarter, we saw super freshman Hannah Hidalgo on the bench for Notre Dame with the training staff, and they were working on her nose, trying to take out her, her nose ring. Uh, why? Because the ref said that she couldn't come in without removing it. The NCAA has a rule against piercing, but they have not really enforced that rule all season. And we have seen various prominent players playing with a nose ring. Usually they just have it taped up or put a Band-Aid over it. Uh, but this time, the ref decided to enforce the rule at the start of the second quarter, um, and that was supposedly a point of emphasis for the Sweet 16. According to USA Today, Hannah said that one of the officials told her during warmups that she would need to take it out. She asked if she could cover it up instead, and she was told that that would be fine. But at the end of the first quarter, Hannah was told to remove it. And she said, I think it's BS. They should have just let me play with it if that's what they said. So... Yeah, that that's what that's what happened there. Yeah, <clears throat> what I I didn't know what happened, so I guess it was in the point of emphasis in the Sweet 16 with jewelry, and she's had a nose ring the entire season. So just wish we'd have known beforehand, but can't control it, so we had to move on. On to the next one, where South Carolina went from dominating Indiana to sweeking sweeping by with a victory, winning 79 to 75. And this game was a tale of two halves. South Carolina easily dominated Indiana. At one point, they got a 22-point lead. And South Carolina did that by their guards, shooting the three very, very well and getting the ball down low to score. And it felt like Indiana started slow walking the Gamecocks back in that, in that third quarter, hitting three-point buckets, 
uh, their post players being smart in the paint to try not to avoid getting their shot blocked. And next thing you know, it's a two point game, 74 to 72 with a minute left to go. Indiana came back and was on the verge of possibly getting an upset against the Gamecocks. So what does Don Staley do? Where she calls a timeout and tells her guards to get the ball in the paint to Camila Cardoso and play through her. And uh, what, did, what did South Carolina do? They did just that. On the next play after that timeout, inbound the ball, Raven Johnson gets it. She passes it to Camilla. Camilla passes it right back out to, to Raven Johnson, who had who had had um, moved slightly from the th- uh, moved slightly to a different spot on the three point line. What does she do? Splash, drains the shot, no hesitation at all from the three point line from Raven Johnson. It's in her open, and you can tell in her eyes when she's gonna make a three. She wanted, so I just kicked it out and she knocked it in. So it was just reflex from you. Yeah, we have a really good chemistry. We played together for eight years, guys. <laughs> Raven, could you just set up that three-pointer uh, that you shot that kind of put them to bed? What was the play call out of the timeout, and how good did it feel coming out of your hand? I mean, I was open, and all I could think is let it go. I mean, I don't, I don't want to lose. Just going from last year, nobody can sag off me this year, and I, I take that very personal. And I just, you know, get in the gym every day and put up reps, and I think that's where it co- that's what it come from, confidence. Go ahead. Was repeat the point? question. The go play ahead. call was to get the ball in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Raven said that the players to get the ball in the basket, but what actually was you hoping to get in that open three she hit? Um, I mean, we wanted to get the ball to Camilla. And Camilla, um, they collapsed on Camilla, left Raven wide open. And, um, I mean, I wanted her to shoot it. I, I mean, I was mouthed and shoot it because she was so wide open and she shot it in rhythm. And when, you know, when it's like that, good, bad, or indifferent, it's a, it's a really good shot to take. And I'm happy that Raven stepped up. But be, before that shot, I mean, I, I saw in Raven's eyes when it was coming down the stretch and they, you know, our lead was diminishing. Um, I, I knew she wasn't going to let us lose. I knew she was going to do something. Um, and she had, she had two big baskets, that the three and then the mid-range shot in the lane. And then she made one of two free throws. So, a lot of that was her making big plays, instinctive plays um, that, you know, really good point guards do when they need to do it. And that play really was the momentum shift that South Carolina needed to finish this game. Players of the game were the two besties. Camila Cardoso with an extremely efficient 22 points, seven rebounds, four assists, three block shots, and zero turnovers. Also, Raven Johnson finishes the game with 14 points, going three of three from the three-point line, six rebounds, and also zero turnovers. South Carolina will take on Oregon on Sunday. Now, yesterday's game also was the last game for Mackenzie Holmes for the Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, She has played her final game, and here's what she had to say after it was over. If you could please just share with us um, your, your feelings and your emotions, and please take your time. Yeah, I mean, obviously this, anyone who knows me knows how much I love being a Hoosier. Um, And I just pray that any high schooler that is looking at colleges, that they pick a school that they feel the same way that I have felt about Indiana. I know the transfer portal is huge right now, but I'm here for for five years because I loved being a Hoosier and I, you know, loved every second. So I just pray that, you know, every student athlete gets to feel the way I feel about a school. Um, because they deserve it. It's an amazing feeling. Um, I wouldn't be this upset if it didn't mean so much to me. So, you know, accomplishments aside, um, I've met, you know, friends that have turned into family here at IU, um, people that I'll have with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I think that's the greatest accomplishment of all is the, the experiences, the moments, and the people that I've spent five years here with. Um, and that's all, that's all I really have to say about that. But I'm just very, very thankful that Coach Morin saw something in me, offered me to play here, and um, that I've gotten the chance to play five years under her with some really, really special people. All right, moving on to Stanford, going down to NC State. NC State defeats the Cardinals 77-67. to And again, this was a tale of two halves. Stanford was up by 10 at the start of the third quarter, and... Here comes the Wolfpack. More specifically, here comes Isaiah James, who once again showed up and showed out for her team, finishing with 29 buckets, hitting bucket after bucket after bucket, finishing at the rim, as well as stepping back and hitting some threes as well. 
Uh, she really was clicking on all cylinders. Are you ever surprised at what Zaza can do? Yeah, yeah, she was pretty special tonight, you know, and we just got where we were just running, you know, for her, ever possession down. Uh, let's, you know, let's try to again, get the post involved. So we'll set a pick on the ball and, and make the post have to maybe help and switch or whatever. Uh, but yeah, when, when you realize a player is on a roll like that, you know, for instance, the shot she hit from the logo or whatever, uh, you got to just keep going to her. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. It wasn't anything great draw up play or whatever. It was just, let's get it in her hands, get her in a two man game with somebody. And here we go. And that really was what fueled the rest of the team from Sonia Rivers to Madison Hayes. This team was just on a roll. And most importantly, they got Stanford to foul with Kiki uh, Iraafan and Cameron Brink in foul trouble throughout the entire game. Both players didn't even play more than 26 minutes because they were in such foul trouble. You barely saw both players on the court at the same time because NC State was smart. On offense, they were aggressive. Yes, Cameron Brink got seven blocks in this game, but also she got fouled out with eight minutes left to go in the game. And Kiki Iraafan didn't get fouled out, but she was severely hampered in what she could do on the defensive end in the post because she was worried about getting in foul trouble. That was very, very smart by Wes Moore to, to make sure that his guards and post players were aggressive. Uh, yes, you may get your, you may get your shot blocked, but you also can get the, the bigs, the tall trees of Stanford. You can get them in foul trouble and get them out of the game. And that really was the difference. It was NC state's, guards against Stanford's bigs. And once you, once you were able to uh, neutralize one of them, the other team was going to win. And they were able to neutralize what the bigs for, for Stanford was able to do because they were in foul trouble. Uh, I think watching their game against Iowa State, we knew that it was possible to get their bigs in foul trouble just watching that game. So coming in, we knew that we needed to attack their bigs. And once we saw that we got her out there, got Kiki in foul trouble, it definitely gave us some momentum. You know, again, we were able to attack some off the bounce, especially, you know, Isaiah uh, was able to go off the bounce and make their posts have to help and get them involved, and that always helps. And, um, you know, she hit 10 out of 11 free throws, so that was big as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we knew, we'd watched enough film, we knew she's a very physical player. And that, uh, it's talking about Cameron Brinks, and, we, you know, we knew that was a possibility if you could, you know, maybe – get her involved in some pick on the ball, uh, some attacks off the dribble by her guards. And so we were fortunate that it worked out that way. Of course, Kiki often did get her points. Uh, she did score a lot in this game, uh, but you know, it, it wasn't enough uh, for her because Cameron Brink wasn't out there as well. Um, so NC State wins and they make it on to the Elite Eight. All right, so with that being said, that was Cameron Brink's last game as a Stanford Cardinal, and here is what she had to say after the game. But you've had a crazy career at Stanford, very, very high highs, some medium lows. I mean, you guys have been really, really solid for the last four or five years and beyond. That being said, it ends here in Portland for you in college, but if you can reflect back on your time at Stanford and then also kind of take a slight look ahead to the bright future that you have, what would you say about it? I mean, gosh, I feel like these four years, they say it goes by fast and you don't believe them and then it really does. I mean, I still, I feel like a freshman. I feel like I'm still a kid. I'm a kid at heart. I mean, Tara, I'm sure is kicking me under the table saying that I am, but I'm really gonna miss being coached by you, even though I know you're gonna be in my corner the rest of my life. Um, Tara is the best, and she's the best for a reason because I don't think anyone works harder. Um, I've had an absolutely amazing coaching staff. Um, I've played with some of the best players in the country, best shooters, um, and I have lifelong friends that I will never, you know, waver from. So I'm just extremely lucky. And you know, while this is very sad, um, it's also it's just bittersweet. I love these girls, and um, like Hannah said, I want to play basketball for as long as I can. So I'm excited. Um, you got to be announced in front of your family and friends in your home city one more time. You know, what was that experience like? Um, it's amazing. If I have to lose anywhere, I mean, in front of 
family and friends is the way I'd want to do it. So playing in front of them, my last college game ever, really meant a lot to me. And I think I'm really at peace with my career and how it went. I mean, I think we just came up short today, but um, I just feel really lucky. I'm sitting here feeling really lucky and really blessed. And also, here is what Tara Vanderveer had to say about the team going on to next season. Um, we had uh, we need more help offensively from the perimeter, and I think that um, Talana had some really good looks, um, but um, she's really been struggling with uh, her knee has been in pain. She hasn't been able to practice, and hopefully she can get a surgery and get in the gym and really work. What what I'm hopeful about is that seeing the improvement that Kiki made. We need Talana, Elena, uh, Courtney, Nunu, Chloe to make that same improvement um, and to under, you know, Brooke to understand, uh, wow, you know, we can, we can do this too. And I think that the question for Kiki was great. Just she's, she's the leader, you know, um, and we have uh, great kids coming back and great kids coming in. Uh, Tari, you hit on it a little bit about some of the younger players and what's going to have to happen from here, but you lose Cam, you lose Hannah, you're going to a new conference, you have more roadblocks in the portal than a lot of other teams. How challenging is this upcoming offseason for you guys? Uh, Marissa, you know, every offseason is always challenging. Um, you know, when you, we've lost great players because we've had great players to lose, you know, so, um, you know, when when you lose Jane Appel, or you lose Neko Gumake, or Chanel Gumake, or Candice Wiggins, um, they're, they're, I think that I think Kiki is just the um, the, the bright light, the the leader, uh, the inspiration for all of our young players to say, you know, what did she do last year? And well, we weren't in this game, so what did she do in the you know in the tournament? And she put her, you know, instead of uh, you know. Warren, she just got in the gym and worked, and that's what we need uh, other, our other players to do. And that's the only way you get better. Uh, we had some good open looks. We need to knock them down. We need people to get healthy and uh, be committed. Um, and I, I pointed out to our team, you know, like as an example, Oregon State won 13 games last year, won four Pac-12 games last year, and their kids stuck together. They got in the gym, and they got better, and that's what we need to do. All right, on to the final game where Texas absolutely took care of business against Gonzaga, winning 69-47 to in a game that really was the most dominant win of the day. I would say sort of it was order, sort of over from the start with Texas going out to a nine-point lead in, in the first quarter and just extending it from there. Gonzaga is a program that shoots a lot of threes to make up for their lack of size in the paint. And they just couldn't really do it yesterday. They went 18% from the three-point line. And for Vic Schaefer and Texas, the name of the game was shooting efficiency. They went 50% from the three, 50% overall from the field, and 80% from the free throw line. That, my friends, is a recipe for success. And for Texas, I thought once again that Aaliyah Moore had a phenomenal game. She finished with 16 points, 10 rebounds, and a whopping six assists. And again, guys, she is a junior, so we will see a lot more of her next season. Um, you know, see what I did there? Aaliyah Moore. We're going to see more of her next season. Anyway. All right. Um, it wasn't just Aaliyah Moore for Texas. It was Shaylee Gonzalez who did her thing going three of five from the three-point line and finishing with 15 points. Uh, star freshman Madison Booker didn't have the greatest of games. Um, she was just off throughout. She only finished with six points. She had a whopping seven turnovers in this game, but her teammates had her back and they got the job done. So we will see in the Portland Regional, NC State take on Texas on Sunday in the Elite Eight. First of all, I just want to congratulate Gonzaga on a, on a great year. It's hard to win 30 games, 32 games in a season. And um, obviously that's a really, really good team over there. And in the same breath, I'm going to say that I am so proud of this group, of their effort, uh, their intensity, their focus, their intentionality defensively, attention to detail, um, just off the chart. Um, for those of you that haven't seen us play before, that's pretty much been the standard the last two months. This group's chemistry um, has just grown and grown and grown. Um, it's really fun to coach and fun to watch. I can tell you, I've had a front row seat to it. 
Um, giving God the glory for 33 wins. Um, just what a blessing this group has been and just how they keep continuing to get better. And um, I just thought our, our focus defensively was really on point. I thought we got great bench play tonight. Uh, I thought we had one of our signature um, things that we talk about after the game is how's your continuity through substitution. I thought Hattie was Hattie and Amina really gave us some good minutes inside, um, and uh, and Jock and G came off the bench and young kids that haven't played obviously in this moment very much, but uh, did did a good job. So we beat a really good basketball team tonight. This group right here, they had a little edge to them, I got to tell you, and um, I don't think you want to play this team when they got an edge, and uh, it's not like they need it. They need anything to motivate them, but they are highly motivated right now. And uh, again, it's it's pretty incredible to think that they went out and held them to four for 22 from the three-point line. I think they're averaging what 10, 11, something like that from three, um, contesting everything. It's not like they missed it; they contested all of them and we're right there. Our communication was on point. And um, again, let me tell you something about Shaylee Gonzalez. So she has to move over. Booker gets in foul trouble. Obviously, Book struggled a little bit tonight. Shaylee Gonzalez moves over and takes over the point and just plays spectacular. Runs our team. She's, um, what, six for 11, three for five. She had four assists, no turnovers. How about that? Thank you. And, and uh, two steals, just playing her guts out. Absolutely just an incredible young lady and an incredible basketball player. And uh, she's done it for us in two years that she's been with us. I mean, we're just really, um, really blessed to have her as well as the rest of our group. But she did a heck of a job tonight. You never know when these, these things happen, when you have a young player that might struggle a little bit and uh, she took up the slack. So proud of these kids, proud of our team. It's a great win, and uh, we'll get ready for Sunday. So there you have it. Those were the four games that happened yesterday. I do appreciate y'all for watching this recap. Let me know if you liked it by hitting that like button and also subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. Now, let me know in the comments, guys, what was the biggest uh, game in your opinion? Was it um, Indiana taking South Carolina down to the wire? Was it Notre Dame losing to NC State? What was it? Let me know in the comments below. Was it Texas completely taking care of business against Gonzaga? Let me know what was your favorite game yesterday um, in the comments below. All right, guys, I do want to just say, as always, thank you to the Patreon folks for your financial monthly support of this channel. If you all want to support this channel on an ongoing basis, you can do so at patreon.com slash Quita Love Sports. This has been me, Quita, recapping Friday's games. Until next time. Bye.